Welcome to Barbells and Motherhood. I'm your host, Julianne Bali, owner of Motherhood Barbell. I'm a pregnancy and postpartum athleticism coach, CrossFit Level 1, and mom of three. On this podcast, we discuss all things pre- and postnatal exercise, bust common myths such as don't lift over 20 pounds, educate about core and pelvic health, and explore all facets of motherhood. If you're a pregnant or postpartum mom that likes to throw around barbells, want to learn more about your pelvic floor and core, and looking for real research-based exercise guidance in any season of motherhood, this podcast is for you. Hello, welcome back to another episode of Barbells and Motherhood. Today is a topic that's been on my mind for a while from a frequently asked question. I get this question all the time, all the time, of how do you do it all? How do you find time to exercise and run your business and do your job and be a mom and all the things? And there are a couple of answers to this. But I'm going to start with the first that is that I, I'm in a different phase of my motherhood now. I'm not saying that it's easier. I'm not saying that it's not, you know, still a challenge. But I've been a mom for five years now. And that doesn't seem like a long time, but it seems like an eternity <laughs> as a mom. I've been able to practice different things to figure out how to balance things and know that you are not failing if some things fall on the wayside. That some things just have to. Like you figure out which of your balls you're keeping in the air (laughs) are glass and which ones are rubber and which ones can fall because there are just some things that I don't give my mental space to and that I don't worry about. And I don't try to do it all. I just do what I can do. And so that allows me to be able to do all the things that I want to do. It it comes down to what am I prioritizing? What are my non-negotiables that I do every day, every week? For me, it's exercise. And sometimes it doesn't happen. So it goes back into dropping my all or nothing mindset that If all I do that day is back squat, then that's all I do that day, and that's perfectly acceptable. So it's getting rid of that perfectionism, and it's allowing things to not be perfect and being able to know that sometimes I'm going to put a full effort into something and sometimes I'm not, but if it gets done, then great. And just figuring out what is most important to me and focusing on those things, and then everything else just kind of either doesn't happen, which is fine, such as maybe not getting to the laundry right away, or sometimes it does happen. And so that has come with years of practice of being a mom for longer and getting used to motherhood. And, you know, once you have your, you've had your first baby for a while, you kind of get into a groove, you kind of figure things out, maybe not right away, maybe it's not until they're 18 months old, but I feel like you do eventually get to a point where you're like, okay, this isn't as overwhelming. I got this. I figured out how to do things efficiently. And, you know, by the time I got to my third, I was just like, just roll with the punches. Like, I'm very low key. I'm very laid back. And I think that helps a lot that I don't freak out or have, like, I don't have my expectations be extraordinarily high. (laughs) I let things just be what they are. And that's helped a lot. But again, it's just realizing that it might just take time to be able to get used to motherhood, but also being able to not try to do everything, I guess, um, and do the things that matter the most to you. And it's a lot of juggling. It's a lot of doing things while my kid is occupied in their high chair, eating a a snack. <laughs> That's how I used to exercise is I used to bring my, uh, I used to wait until my, my baby was ready for a snack and I'd put him in the high chair and they would be there and I would exercise. And so it's finding different things like that. And so, the, you know, it's all of the, that stuff, but really, you know, the biggest reason, at least right now in this season that I'm in of 
quote, how I do it all is because I have an insane amount of help. We currently live with my in-laws and I've known them for almost 16 years. I've, they've been in my life for, um, all of my teen years and obviously into adulthood. And we've been best friends for all these years. And so it's a very positive situation living with them. We all like each other. We all like living with each other. Um, obviously we haven't always lived with them because, well, we did live with them when I first got married for three years and then we moved to Idaho and we were there for 18 months and then I had no help. And then just recently, if you follow along with my Instagram, uh, we just recently, well, I guess it's been a year now. Wow. It's been a whole year that we moved back to Texas, uh, after a pretty traumatic ending in Idaho. We, I guess just to get into that story, we had lived in Rexburg, Idaho for about a year at that point, And we felt like, okay, we, we felt very strongly of, we need to buy a house. It's time to buy a house. And so we had got all our ducks in a row. We had talked it over with Adam's employer and we had, you know, additional funds to be able to do this. We had worked it all out. We had gotten to a position where we're like, yeah, we feel good. Let's do this. Um, and long story short, the first house that we loved fell through because it ended up having a lot of foundation issues that were going to be like way too expensive to fix. And so we were not going to be able to get a loan on that house. So that one fell through, which was heartbreaking, heart wrenching. But then we, by a miracle, found another house and we were like, okay, this is the one. Like we walked in right when someone else had fallen through on it and it felt perfect and it felt like this is the place and it was in a great neighborhood, and it was a little bit of a fixer-upper, but we were ready and excited to do that, and it was great. And we were supposed to close on this date, then that date, then it was pushed a little bit more to the point of, okay, well, it's not going to be until after Thanksgiving, so we were going to travel to Texas for Thanksgiving that year. This would have been 2021. And so we traveled to Texas and we were like, well, we'll close. We'll have to close while we're in Texas for Thanksgiving. So it will be done virtually. So we would sign virtually and it would all be good. It was supposed to be like the very, very beginning of December or something like that. And it's a, there's a whole lot more to this story, but just to keep it short, uh, everything fell through my husband's job. And we thought that there was... Um, one agreement, then there wasn't that agreement anymore, and it ended up just dissolving, and everything fell through. We had to knock at the house because the job we thought was happening isn't happening. You know, there was a lot that happened, <laughs> and needless to say, it didn't happen. We lost, uh, you know, the opportunity to have that house. And now we're in Texas and we're like, um, <laughs> what? Well, what do we do now? Like, we thought we were going to buy our forever home in Idaho. And now what do we do? And at that point, we were living with uh, my mom in an apartment in Rexburg because she had moved up there as well that same summer. And it was already full of boxes because we thought we were moving. So we had packed most of our stuff. So the you know, it's not that big of an apartment, full of boxes with two kids, and I'm pregnant at the time. Yeah, I'm in like, at the point that we found out that we're, we lost the house, I was in my third trimester, or at least close to my third trimester, and I hadn't even had a prenatal appointment yet, because I was waiting on the house stuff, because I just wasn't sure what was going on, and I didn't have the mental space, and it was my third, so I didn't really like I wasn't nervous or I didn't really need anything, so to speak, at that point. And so I hadn't even had a prenatal appointment. And we knew that we like had to figure out something. And we couldn't go back to that tiny apartment. It was just too cramped and I was too stressed. And I I didn't know what to do. And Adam had to get back to Idaho, though, to get back to work because there was a project that they needed to finish. 
And so by the end of the year, and so I'm just like, I cannot go back to Idaho right now. I can't do it. I'm, I'm just not going to do it. I can't go back to that apartment full of boxes. I can't face that. I have to stay here for at least a little bit. And so what we decided to do is, okay, well, we'll, we will spend Christmas in Texas. And so Adam flew back to Idaho, did his last couple of weeks of work, and then he flew back to Texas for Christmas. And we were just going to have Christmas. And then we would figure out what to do after that. And so we had Christmas, we had New Year's. It was awesome. It was nice to just relax and not worry about anything for a second. <laughs> it was really difficult though, emotionally, it was so difficult because I'm like, I'm about to have this baby. He was due in April and I don't even know where we're going to live. Where am I going to have this baby? Are we going back to Idaho? Are we, what are we doing? And so through a lot, a lot of prayer and pondering and cons and pros and cons list, lists and everything, <laughs> uh, talking to Adam's parents, we came to the de- decision to move back to Texas. And that was really hard because I love Idaho. I loved living there. It was definitely hard when we moved to Idaho because we were away from our family. But it was, I still love being up north. I love the mountains and I enjoy snow and I love that. I liked the small town life and everything. And so it was really, really hard to move to make that decision, but it felt really right. And we had a lot of peace about our decision. And so at that point, we decided to move back to Texas and move back in with Adam's parents, which they were all for. And so after having no support in Idaho, except for when my mom had moved in, um, again, that summer of 2021, but before that, we had no support, to then moving back into a house full of support, all hands on deck, because Adam has two younger brothers that live here as well, and um, obviously his parents. And this house is a very large home. It's over 4,000 square feet, so there's plenty of space for all of us. The upstairs was basically empty, and so we, you know, took one of the large bonus rooms upstairs and turned it into our bedroom where we had been sleeping anyways on an air mattress for six months. <laughs> um, and we are back living here in Texas. And so that was unexpected. Like we did not expect to move back in with Adam's parents. We thought, again, we were going to live in Idaho long term. We thought we had bought our forever home. And so it was very unexpected, but very good to be able to move back here. And then ended up having my baby downstairs in the master bathroom suite in April. It's almost a year old, or at least, you know, at the point of this um, podcast airing, he probably will have turned one, but I'm not sure. So he, April 2023 is when he's turning one. <laughs> um, and everything felt good. We combined forces. We ended up getting our stuff from Idaho, not until May because of winter and because of financial things. Like Adam had to get a job again here in Texas. And so like there was a lot of transition, but we ended up getting our stuff in, in May of 2022. And we brought in all of our furniture. We combined a lot of our household items with his parents. And so we're just basically one big household that works together and labors in love together. And so that, you know, I went through all of the stuff in the beginning of the podcast, but really I have to acknowledge my privilege of living with family, having that village that so many wonder where it is. And I know that my situation is not for everybody. I know that I get... I get this comment all the time of, I can never live with my in-laws. I can never live with family. And I'm like, I understand. Like, I definitely get it. And it does help that my in-laws are amazing and that we've known them. Again, I've known them for 16 years almost. You know, but it is, 
a different transition of living in a combined house with other people. You know, it really teaches you communication and patience and you have to work together. And that's really difficult at times, but it's also really good. And so I have 24 seven support and care for my children. And so, you know, they always have someone to go to when they fall down and they, you know, skin their knee or whatever. There's always somebody to give them a snack or there's always a hand on deck to be able to help my children with whatever they need. And it's not just on me. And I know that this situation is not for forever. I know it's not going to be like the rest of my life to have this much built in support. I know that it's for now and that but I am so incredibly grateful for it. And it has been a life saving thing for me because I struggle with my uh, mental and emotional health. I have always had anxiety and depression. I've always been one to get more overwhelmed more easily than like the average person. I've always been one where I've been like a late bloomer or it takes me longer to be able to handle things than other people, if that makes sense. And so, it's no mistake that we're here. I needed this extra support, especially through that really hard transition of losing the house in Idaho, especially with having my third baby. Like, I did not have to worry about my two older boys after I had my baby last April. They were just taken care of. And my mother-in-law, who her life calling <laughs> is to care for children in she And she is literally incredible at it. She knows how to care for them, connect with them, be on their level. It's what brings her joy. And so she's in heaven and being able to be with the, her grand grandbabies all the time. And so when I had uh, my youngest, when I had my baby, I was able to just rest with him. And obviously, yes, I care for my older children. It's not like, oh, everyone else just does it. Of course I do. I, of course I do. But there are other people that they got to go to when mom did need to take a nap with baby and mom did need to just nurse and figure out this new baby. They got to go to the park and go to the playground and go have fun and do fun things and not have to be like, oh, I'm just missing mom. Like they got to do fun stuff. And obviously my husband is around as well. And my husband has been working from home more uh, as of late and is kind of in flux with his career right now. He does work on Fridays as an audio engineer at the Left Field Airport because they have a stage at the airport where different musical artists come and perform and he's the audio engineer there on Fridays. Um, but other than that, he's in flux in figuring out um, his next career move. And so he's been home more. And so that's been helpful too, because the last several months as I've transitioned into a working role as a working mom, he's been able to be with the boys and be more of the at-home parent role on the days that he's home to put them down for naps and give them meals and help them in the morning while I'm working. And so that's been a huge blessing too, as I've transitioned into this new world of being a working mom, which I never expected I never thought I'd be a working mom ever, <laughs> ever, ever, ever. And so, and that's been a really hard transition for me. It has not been easy. It has been really emotional and really hard because the boys have been like, mama, why do you have to work all the time now? Why aren't you with us now? Mama, why do you have to go in the office again? And so like, it's been really emotional and hard to transition into this role, but it's been made easier because Adam has been able to be there as dad and be able to help them and spend more time with them. It's a very, very unique season for Adam as well to be able to have this much time with his boys after having absolutely no time with them when we lived in Idaho and then when he first moved back to Texas and he was working all the time. And so it's been a really cool, unique season for all of us. Um, and that really truly is how I quote do it all is because I don't have to bring my kids to the gym with me every day like I used to in Idaho. And like, I want you to understand, like, I haven't always had it like quote this easy. Like when we lived in Idaho, I had to do it all. And I had terrible postpartum depression, postpartum rage, 
postpartum, everything. <laughs> like it was really, really hard and really bad for a while there in Idaho to where I was just depressed. I just laid around because I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what, and I just I was having the worst time. And so, you know, during that time, I brought the boys with me every single day to the gym. I brought them. I got a little baby in the baby um, car seat, and then my oldest was old enough to play. They had like a little playhouse at the gym, but like every single day, I brought them with me until I finally connected with some fellow Rexburg moms and was able to, you know, swap babysitting and stuff. But that wasn't until the very end of my Rexburg time. And so it was just a lot of tears and difficult difficulty during that season. But then to be able to um, contrast that with what I have now, oh my gosh, it's it made like the really dark, hard part of my motherhood like those days has really helped me to appreciate and understand what I have now. And I absolutely never, ever will take it for granted or um, lose perspective of what I have because I know it's very, very unique and unheard of. It's unheard of, the kind of support that I have as a mom and it has been life saving for me because I never, because I, you know, when I was in Idaho and things were really hard, I didn't even like being a mom anymore because I was like, this is so hard. I'm not even happy. I'm not finding joy in anything that I'm doing. I'm just surviving. I wake up and I survive until bedtime. And that was my reality for a while. And so to be able to not have that life anymore and to be able to chase my, dreams basically like this podcast is part of that dream and the business I started motherhood barbell and now I have an amazing job that I love in the pre-postnatal field it's it's literally amazing <laughs> and I just want you to know like you just can't compare your experience with anyone else's you don't and you know, a lot of the times, on, obviously we know on social media, we see the highlight reel, right? We see like the best of everybody's day. And like, you know, I definitely try to be more real on social media and be able to s share the hard things as a mom. But also, you know, people still are confused. They're like, but how are you doing all of this? How are you at the gym four days a week and then in the garage and how do you constantly post your contents and like it's yeah it's because I have so much help but also I have I mean yes I have the help that definitely is like the cornerstone reason but also I wanted to tack on another extra thing of I also took started taking my business seriously to the point of I gave myself work hours like I had told you before I transitioned into being a working mom because yes I have my job I work with uh, Brianna Battles of Pregnancy and Postpartum Athleticism on her marketing team that is so that obviously I need hours for that but as far as content creation and my business and all the things that I'm working on personally I set myself work hours I start about 6 30 every morning I wake up uh, before my kids and my husband takes them in the morning, like I said. And I get in my office around 6.30, well, most mornings. And I get a huge chunk of work done in the morning time. And so like, I know that that's my set-aside time to be able to do whatever I need to do, whatever I want to do for my work and my business. And that has made all the difference because it's like, okay, I know this is dedicated time that I can post a reel or write a blog post or update my website and whatever. And so me taking it seriously and setting those hours as a priority for me has helped me to be able to do more because then I have other hours in the day that I can be, you know, doing mom stuff and going to the gym and whatever. And so it's been more so, you know, a combination of having help, but then taking myself seriously and really setting hours for myself. 
And so, yeah, so if you <laughs> see somebody online, you're like, how do they do it all? No, there's probably a, a lot of circumstances as to how and why, and to never compare and to never feel like you're not doing enough because you are doing the best that you can. You are. You are doing what you can with the circumstances that you have. You are working hard. You are doing it the way that you need to be doing it. And that is enough. And that is fine. And so I just don't ever want anybody to think that because they see me, quote, killing it, as I've been told, like, wow, you're killing it on Instagram or whatever. It's a unique situation. It's a unique season in my life. And so... You know, I just want you guys to know that. And I am so grateful for the privilege that I have to be able to have all of the projects that I have going on, this podcast, my business, my job. I love working in the pre-postnatal field. I love creating content for all of you. I love doing this podcast. So I'm grateful that I have the opportunity to be able to do these things with the help that I do. And that is all I have for you today. And please check out my Instagram and my TikTok uh, at julianne.bali for all of my free content and my website motherhoodbarbell.com for all of the offers that I have right now so I can serve you in any season of motherhood.